Your boy Boss Cowboy, and obviously we're here to bring you another one. Another one. Mm -hmm. Cool when they do it. Cool, it's huh? a problem when I do it. Yeah, so we finna bring y'all that sauce. Speaking our minds, man, because the Cowboys at it again. They back to finessing. <laughs> this time. They finesse three times. God, oh man, they speaking their mind. Real, real, back. real. He be speaking his mind. That boy was the shit. Ooh, I guess Jerry and Steven over here, like, I'm tired of y'all acting like we not football guys. The South got something to say. <laughs> and that's how they moving, man. They moving right now. Let's be honest, this is a different Dallas Cowboys. This is a fed up Dallas Cowboys. They tired of the talk. Running up, running up. And they doing some good things, man. So we gonna kind of get into it, but tonight is gonna be special. Because we gonna get into some raw film. Not no prepared film, some raw film. So we gonna show some raw film and go a little bit deeper with our new candidates, you know? Because I'm gonna be honest, when it comes down to this content on film, sometimes you can paint the picture that you won't paint it, right? But anybody that's doing real analysis is going to let the film do all the talking, you know? So there are different ways to manipulate film where you can pull out highlights or you can pull out low lights, right? And if you're trying to make a player look bad, then you will show all the bad plays. If you're trying to make a player look good, you're going to show all the great plays. And you're going to leave all the, the details out. So we're not going to do that. We're going to let the film speak. Okay? We also go, you know, continue to work on my Plan B phone system. So y'all going to be a part of helping with all of that, man. But y'all kind of sit back. Uh, and relax, man. I'll be right back. Let me fly this plane. I need a little bit more time, man, so y'all just hang out, man. We got to play the old intro. Yeah, well, hold on. We got to do a little bit different. Y'all give me one second, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> y'all give me one second. I'll be right back. Y'all give me one second, man. Something just came up. I got to handle this emergency. Hold on.
ain't no turning back. All right, so y'all give me one second, man. Let me get all these these settings going real quick, and then we go get right into the content. Apologize about that, man. You know, hey, can't do nothing, man. When stuff pop up, hey, man, that's what it is. So, all right, but we go talk about this finessing that's going on, cause it is. It's more finessing. All right, so y'all give me one second. All right, so I should have everything going now. Thank y'all for being patient. I know y'all like balls. That had to be the worst intro ever. Yeah, probably my worst intro ever. But hey, it was a real intro. It was just real to life. All right, here we go. So, all right, so obviously, man, one of the things I'm talking about is what just came out. All right, so about an hour ago. Uh, so the Cowboys have restructured. Let me turn this down. The Cowboys have restructured Brandon Cook's contract, turning eight million of his twelve million base salary into signing bonus. His salary is now four million. <laughs> four million. He will count six million against the cap. He is still making the eighteen million. He was guaranteed in 2023 with Houston paying him $6 million. Wow, Dallas. Wow. So, obviously, yesterday I did the show uh, making a play on the rap, the rap of Finesse two, two times. So, at this point, because we made the point yesterday that we was fleeced, we fleeced ourselves, but we finessed two times to make up for it. And we really did, we really did. But see, that was a miscalculation. We actually now, when you look at the details of this, uh, we finessed three times. So the question is, what are we preparing for? Cause see, usually when we make moves like this, we are preparing for another move, obviously, right? So I put this out on Twitter, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And I want to hear from y'all on this too. This could be another exercise to where we hear from you. We hear from the Cowboy Nation, the Cowboy World. The Cowboy Voice is on what is the Dallas Cowboys up to? Because I said, boy, 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 the Cowboys cooking the books. Another move. Another move? Is it another move? So most of us would definitely based on past being prologue where you're trying to get a prediction of the future by looking at the past what would you say and i want everybody to answer what would you say and who would you say the dallas cowboys are up to who would you say what are they doing what's likely going on so i want to see y'all responses real quick before i start kind of getting into this film and stuff but I really do. I want to kind of hear from y'all. Uh, so I see somebody, my boy, Big Big Dow. He said Bobby Wagner. Uh, so a lot of y'all saying Bobby Wagner, I see. Richard said, Hankins, please. I'm seeing a lot of B Wagner. Majority is, I'm seeing Hankins or Wagner. Then somebody reached all the way outside the box. My boy Vandell Jackson, he said, uh, Ashawn Robinson. I was looking at his film today because uh, I'm going to do a breakdown on him. But so we got, uh, let me see, we got Ashawn Robinson, Bobby Wagner. Then we got somebody said Diggs, new contract. I think that's a good one. And then uh, Coach Q said Fowler or Hankins would not make would not make you move money, right? Then Pastor Self, Pastor Taft said, this is about digs. Uh, so, and then, so I'm seeing a majority of Hankins and Bobby Wagner. That's, that's what I'm seeing. So, uh, so somebody said Bobby Wagner and Hankins and Fowler. So you saying all three. So let me see. Uh, I'm just looking at some of y'all comments real quick. Somebody says steal. C says steal. Yeah, yeah, we have. We finessed three times, Kevin. 
Yeah, we have. We finished three times. So I know sometimes people coming in just a little bit late. They just not getting the notifications, putting the kids down. In case y'all haven't heard about or maybe two hours ago, I said an hour ago. The Cowboys restructured Brandon Cooks. That's why I'm saying they finessed three times. Because they already won on... See, because they finessed... Because remember, the Texans are trying to get a second rounder, allegedly, last year. Just in December, they was trying to get a second rounder. Now they got fleeced for a fifth rounder and a sixth rounder in the previous year. And on top of that, Dallas was able to restructure... <laughs> His contract to make the cap hit soft. <laughs> oh my God. That's that's finessing. Ooh, Dallas, you, ooh, you sneaky finesser, you. So, Kevin, what we're doing is we now asking the question. Uh, and did somebody say, did you see Cooks and Gilmore coming? I did not see Gilmore coming. I did not. But I saw Cooks, Cooks coming. I did. So I got the I got the uh, receipts to prove it. So here it is. This is the receipts. Uh so they was asked when they restructured um Tyron Smith. My boy asked my boy Marcus asked me, who do you think boss or what position? And so my so this was obviously before um we signed B Cook. And I said, my guess would be another one of our guys, Fowler. That is the only one that I can think of at the, that seem like they they are in real talks, like real talks, not hopes, not dreams, real talks, right? So, you know, it been reports that it been talks out there with Fowler. So, and then Fowler, as y'all know, is top on my free agent list. You know, some of y'all had, and I had no problem with this. Uh, a lot of people had Donovan Wilson. I didn't have Donovan Wilson as my number one free agent. Outside of Terrence Steele, my number one free agent was Fowler. Obviously, they've been in talk with Fowler. So, I'm going to just put it like this. I'm sticking with my original two. B. Cook. And the reason why I said Brandon Cooks is because the pattern of us is to circle back to people that we was in talks with before. And it makes sense to do it that way. Because it's almost like, you know, dusting off a good faith estimate and then just kind of rehashing the details to get everything in line from previous conversation. It usually works better that way when you're in negotiations. Uh, <laughs> alpha, Alpha, Alpha. <laughs> Look at this comment by Alpha. <laughs> alpha, I'm <feed. laughs> <laughs> he said, Jerry, <laughs> hey, hey, this is real though. This is real. This is real. Alpha said, Jerry tired of all the how we might, how we magic BS, bro. He moving like it, <laughs> isn't it? Is it Jerry moving like he tired of the talk? I'm talking about say this is a different tell the truth. Uh and then Frank say, How's my night going, man? I'm going good. I'm actually doing good, man. So so I'ma stick to my gun. So I saw all of y'all lists. It's on record. That's why I wanted all of us to participate in this. So, you know, we can get the exercise of kind of practicing tea leave interpretation together. All right. So that's real important that we kind of practice this together. So going back to what I was saying, I'm going to stick to my guns. I think this is still going to be about Fowler, you know? So I'm going to put it like this. I'm, I'm likely expecting any minute now that Fowler hopefully is going to be the person named that's called, you know? That's what I said about four or five days ago. That's what I still believe today. I, you know, and I showed y'all which a lot of people are sleeping on. And I promise you, a lot of people are, are sleeping on this. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Let me go to Pastor Taff. Uh, let me see. He said, Jerry trying to stunt before the owners. <laughs> he doing something, Pastor. Pastor, he is doing something. <laughs> he is doing something. And, and, and this is what I also predicted. And this is also why the Dallas Cowboys are doing a great job right now. 
the very to see the the beautiful thing about especially having a week one like the Dallas Cowboys are having obviously with people like Brandon Cooks right and then Gilmore the other thing that this is doing that coach coach Marv mentioned this also yesterday as well is if there's anybody that's on the fence of being a Dallas Cowboy when you see this type of team coming together with Brandon Cooks and then Gilmore, and it's just the first week of free agency, this is going to cause a lot more people who was on the fence and likely haggling over a few million to go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and rock with Dallas. I'm just telling you right now, because it's a lot of people who want to be Dallas Cowboys. That's just how it goes, man. I know that firsthand from talking to a lot of these players. And when you see one of your favorite teams going all in, you want to be a part of that. And this is the funny thing. This is not even really all in. This is still exactly what Jerry talked about when he said, I want to be in the middle. These are still, even though these are very good acquisitions, with Cook and Gilmore, right? Cooks and Gilmore. Even though these are very, very good acquisitions, this is still not the Dallas Cowboys being all the way fully aggressive. This is middle of the road free agents. These are just value free agents. So I'm gonna show you an article real quick and then I'm gonna get I'm gonna test the phone lines and then I'm we gonna get into a little bit of film that I want to show y'all and just showcase. I'm gonna show y'all a couple of things. So before though, before before I get it to, uh, before I get it to, no, let me show this first. I'm gonna show this first, then I'm gonna get it to what all of this stuff means, and then we gonna get into the film. Hold on real quick. Rodney with a, I see you with the super chat. Let me address your super chat, big dog. And then Rodney said, let me see. Right, it said, boss, you heard they're moving practice squad players, Isaac Alicorn from OT, D-line 6'7 and 300 pounds. Yeah, I heard about that. So let me go ahead and get my opinion on that. Then we'll come back to what I was getting ready to talk about. Um, I'm not a believer in this move. Uh, I think it's one of those things to where it's so many defensive linemen that's of his height and weight that have been playing that position their whole life that would dream and die to be on a practice squad. And for the Dallas Cowboys to just turn them around from all that practicing on offense to be an offensive lineman, to now switching them over to the defensive side, as if practice squad is going to really give them a real feel of him and his potential at defensive tackle. I don't believe it. I'm just being honest. I don't believe it. Now, could he be a fish in water at defensive tackle? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the chances of that being real is like 99.9% .9 hell no. See, it's one thing to be a new football player it's another thing to switch to a whole brand new position three years into the league. So the chances of that being successful is quite low. And then somebody say, that's a Dan Quinn move. I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's Dan Quinn. I'm just, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure Dan Quinn, if it is, I'll be shocked. I will be shocked. I, I I just don't see Dan Quinn sitting there saying, wow, this guy's really getting out of that practice. We need to move him to our side of the ball. And then, and I hear what y'all saying. He said, hear me out. What if Dan Quinn sends something in him? He could. I just, I just, this is my thing. He could see something in him. And every now and then you do discover those gems like that. He said, hold up boss. Let's take a pause and get them lights up. Them likes looking bad like that. Let's let's let the room fill up a little bit more first. Let's let the room fill up and then we go start getting on people about them likes. But Ricky, if they see something in him, 
uh, you know, hopefully they do. It's just, I'm just trying to use my common sense, right? And I'm trying to imagine somebody that's just now getting a chance to play defensive tackle, right? And I'm looking at guys who've been playing that position their whole life. And they still don't make the league. I'm just trying to imagine him showing that much promise. You know, I'm just, I just don't see it. But if if he flashed that good, uh, yeah. Then, then Dan Quinn hopefully able to make some work with it. It's just that I can't see it, cause it'll be the first time I've ever heard of it. You know what I mean? Just. And I'm just being honest. I don't want to lie in my analysis and get y'all hopes up like, oh, man, this is going to be our new DT. We, Because, you know, if you look at the, the height and the weight, you'll be like, you know. <laughs> you know, it, you'll start clapping it up like, whoo, look at that size. But we all know it's a whole lot more than playing defensive tackle in the trenches other than just height and weight. And sometimes the taller you are, the worse, because the low man wins down there. And you got to be real good at playing low with leverage, you know, driving your feet, uh, getting off blocks, able to make um, tackles and all that kind of stuff, you know. So... Uh, so anyway, I just I just don't see it, but I just want to address it because it's out there. Uh, and if it happens, then you know we found us a gym, and I'll be happy about that. I really would. Uh, so I want to address that obviously because you know we all heard the news of that today, so we want to talk about that. And then I'm hearing people sometimes refer to it being a PR thing, basically saying that it's because he's Hispanic. Um, and that the Dallas Cowboys are trying to play to the Hispanic market. Maybe they could. They could be doing that. I want to assume that. Because to me, that could be doing a disservice to him and his hard work. You know, I never want to assume that first. You know, even if it might even have the appearance of the, the, the Dallas Cowboys trying to play to the loyal Hispanic market to the Dallas Cowboys because I always said this one of the most loyal markets to the Dallas Cowboys are Hispanic brothers and sisters they are very loyal like they go all out to brand the Dallas Cowboys like they wrap their cars in Dallas Cowboys gear they put it around their homes they brand the hell out of the Dallas Cowboys you know, but I don't want to assume that. I don't want to say, oh, it's because he's Hispanic that they trying to do all this stuff. I don't know that. I have no idea about that. So, but all I can do is give the, you know, all I can do is just say the chances of him being able to successfully make that transition from offensive line to defensive line. I just, if I'm being honest, it's like, it's a long shot, but I'm open to it. I'm very open to it, and we'll see. So, um, but this is what I want to get into, though, man. I want to get into a couple of things. Uh, first, I want to get into, because I said this yesterday, but I didn't, and I'm just being honest. I said this yesterday, but I don't think I quite dug into this good enough, all right? So, I'm going to show y'all something, all right? Yeah, because see, I think some people missed what I was saying, so I want to be a little bit clearer than I was yesterday, all right? So yesterday, uh, we signed Brandon Cooks, but then Amari was trending, you know? So we signed Brandon Cook, but Amari was trending. So, so let me explain what's really going on with that. And see, I talked about it a little bit yesterday to where Dallas had to finesse. I said they had to finesse, but this is why because it was a whole bunch of lurkers. <laughs> I want y'all to feel me on what's really going on behind the scenes. It was a whole bunch of lurkers sitting back waiting on Dallas to finish this receiver acquisition that they obviously was trying to do. And they were sitting back lurking 
so that they could so that they could compare the Amari deal to whatever deal that we did. And see, this is this is not only our enemies, these are also our friends. Just best believe it was a whole lot of people, even in local media, that was sitting back waiting on us to do any deal. And the first thing they was gonna do was compare the cars. And it was gonna be to troll Dallas. It wasn't about, was this a good pick or not? Does it make the Dallas Cowboys better or not? They was sitting back waiting on the deal on whatever deal we would do. So for instance, let's just say if we went and got Jerry Judy, the first thing they would, the first thing they was gonna do is say, Dallas Cowboys, you're so stupid. You literally, you literally gave away a fit for Amari. And then you had to turn around and fix it with a second or first or whatever the trade would it would have been for Jerry Judy. And they were sitting back lurking. <laughs> and I'm talking about massive lurking. This is what this wasn't no little lurking. See, cause this is cause it's obvious what happened. We signed Brandon Cook and then all of a sudden immediately Brandon Cook didn't start trending. Amari started trending. <laughs> so Amari, so that meant that people began to compare on a massive level, on a massive level, on a viral level, people began to compare and they was lurking, just lurkers. Just, just sitting there, just looking at the Cowboys' moves, lurking, <laughs> lurkers. So, so listen and see. Notice, notice. I just want you. I just want you to notice. This is this is how you really know the Dallas Cowboys are doing good, doing real good right now. This is how you really know. Notice how quiet your enemies are. Y'all, y'all notice that? Y'all notice like the people that talk the loudest about the Dallas Cowboys, and it be even your own guys. Like it was started with 105.3 the fan and Sean when he said regret Scott. So now I heard Lord Brunson say that um, Prescott regressed, right? But at, at first I was like, Lord Brunson said it, and it started from him. And somebody was like, No, it didn't, boss. That actually started from your own guy. Sean from 105.3 The Fan. I said, you right. Sean was the first one. And I'm telling you, even, even it was our own media sitting back, waiting, lurking on a deal to get done so that they can write all kinds of stories about how stupid <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys was. And they can't. They cannot. They just can't. It's, so it's, it's so because I knew I wasn't clear because I said I don't think they got it yesterday when I talked about how Amari was trending. It made no sense for Amari to be trending when we just signed Brandon Cooks. It made no sense unless it was massive lurking. It was lurkers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me take some phone calls. I'm a, let me uh, take some phone calls real quick, man. So I'm going to let y'all call in, and then I'm going to call out to you. Uh, no, first, let me call Coach Mark. Let me call Coach Mark real quick. No, let me do it this way. I'm going to let y'all call in first, and then I'm going to call you. Because I got to do it this way until I fix my phones. Uh, y'all give me one second. And then we go get into this film. Because I want to show y'all some film real quick. I, oh man. Okay, let me see. Y'all give me one second. Okay, so I got the call lines open. Y'all go ahead and call on in now. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna see you call. Oh yeah, and while we doing this, this is a good time because the room should be filling up right now. It should be almost getting to capacity. So yeah, it's too many people in here. And as long as you got this many people in here, man, y'all make sure that y'all help grow the channel. And the best ways to do that is to hit that like and subscribe. 
So while I'm waiting on y'all to call in, y'all take a quick light break. All right, so. All right, this boss cowboy, but you probably can't hear me. You can hear me, but I can't hear you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call you right back, Prince, and um, we go talk, you know, through my other phone system. So give me one second, I'm gonna call you right back, Prince. All right, all right, here we go. All right, so that was, so here we go. Let me call real quick. That was, no, that was Coach Q. So let me call Coach Q real quick. Coach Q is gonna be coming from an 832 number, all right? So give me one second. I'm calling you now, Coach. I'm going to just need you to pick up. It's going to be an 832 number. I'm calling you now. And then we'll kind of talk about, you know, whatever freestyle you want to talk about. All right. So give me one second. I'm calling. Here we go. Coach, I'm calling you now. Coach Q. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, Coach? Doing good. Doing good. Man, I love the moves that the uh, Cowboys are doing. I really do. And I even like uh, Dan Quinn noticing uh, Alec Cohen uh, doing the practice squad when he was working his team during, during, the, uh, during the season. Yeah. Uh, I, I do know that Alec Cohen, he actually wrestled back in high school in Mexico, so he knows the mm. And mm. so, you know, maybe it's not going to be a problem. Again, no offense, I know the fans are going to have my say this, but he did have a holding issue. So playing defense <laughs> is not going to be that much of a problem. <laughs> uh, so he, he liked to grapple, he liked to do all that. So, I mean, him being a one one take, one, one take, one take might be helpful because Cowboys is a team, one of the first teams in the NFL to actually switch players from offensive defense. The one of the most famous ones is our left tackle back in the nineties, Mark Tuane came to the Cowboys as a D lineman and they just, you know, moved him over to left tackle. So I mean this is not the first time that the Cowboys have done it. They've actually done it most successfully. Uh, uh what's his name? The Smith, his brother. He was a linebacker, we converted him to fullback. So this this is common uh, in the NFL. So I mean I think that would be a big move. But as far as the money uh, portion. The Cowboys have a pattern. When we move money, you use it for a big time player. Yeah. And, and we've kind of been even consistent this year. So, I mean, I'll, maybe there's a question for you. So, do you think Fowler money is, is that much that we need to move money around? Yes. Or is it something else that, we, that we're not seeing? Okay. Okay. So, that, that's what I was missing. Yes. Is that part. Yes, I do believe that, especially when we went through the advanced exactly. metrics on him and we showed okay. the fact that with a minimum minimum amount of snaps, he was one of the most effective and efficient pass rushers on our team. He was little, literally more efficient than Michael Parsons. Am I saying he's better than Michael Parsons? No. But what I'm saying is when you compare the, the, the reps, and the amount of snaps to the production, Fowler was the most efficient, productive defensive end we had. And so I'm pretty sure other teams saw that as well. Um, you know, so I would bet that, yeah, it, it would be for Fowler. That's That would be my number one guy that I think we're going after, in my opinion. You no, know, and, and, I, and I can see that because this year compared to last year, I think it's kind of flipped. Uh, this year, there's so many run-stopping D-tackles. And so I, I want Cowboys Nation to kind of be frugal with who they want because Hankins is great, but it's a lot of other guys that Boss, you have even talked about that's really, really good run-stoppers like the D-tackle from the Rams and yeah. uh, Lin, Lin, Linville Joseph. It's so many it's a lot. tackles guys, It is. Don't be stuck on Hankins. If we can upgrade and get someone better, we need to do so and I think we can do that because there's so many so when you have an overflow and talent like that in the market the price goes down yeah true and so you know uh, the Joneses they, they love stuff like this yeah so last year you could not find a one stopper so the price was high this year man it's one stoppers everywhere so man that's true person, that is so and, true and, and we, me personally, I'd rather the Cowboys do so. I, I, you know, I love, I love Hankins. I love what he did. But if you like the guy that you keep talking about from from the Rams, who can give you both, who can give you run stopping number one and a little pass rush as well, you better off. Yeah, 
see yeah you talking about a robinson and yes. so i'm doing a show on that this week and i i I uh, 100% agree with your analysis. Not even a thousand percent. It shows me you definitely been looking at their free agent market because I've been looking at their free agent market too, and you are right. The defensive tackle class in this free agent market is deep. It is. You can actually upgrade from Hankins this year, and I love Hankins. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love Hankins, but you are you just write on that and you write this is something to where we could actually slow down a little bit wait to maybe week two wait week three where all of these people got their offers and then we can go get that true one tech yeah so and you write on because because your analysis on robinson i 100 percent agree with it because you know he's listed as a defensive end but he played all over the offensive line he played the three he played the one and he played the the nine right crazily he played the nine i was it was kind of wild to watch that but you could see he was a crazy athlete on in the interior yes. and he did show a lot more pop and sizzle from my eyes than even hankins and that's saying a lot so i fully agree with your analysis i can't wait till we break that down because i could tell you obviously been watching the tape bro because you you are a hundred thousand percent right on that you know, two guys that a lot of Cowboys fans are not talking about that had good years last year is Kalez Campbell and uh, Sue. Both of them guys, they still was able to stop the run and they still gave pass rush. Right. So, uh, looking to those guys, to me, I call them uh, Stephen Jones specials because they long in the tooth, they experience, and they give you both what you're looking for, which is uh, run stopping first and pass rush second. Yeah, and it's amazing. Everybody you listed, I got on my same list. When I get into this, when I start talking about that, because, you know, Coach, some people don't know this, but I'm going through a whole series right now of free agents and draft picks that fit. So when I get in that series, you mentioned two other people that I also have on my list. You know, as people that would be perfect fits for the Dallas Cowboys. So, man, I appreciate your hard work, bro, because obviously we seeing the same things and we never talked about this. I ain't, I ain't put them up to this. I ain't never say, hey, coach, can you call in? Can you talk about this? No, we just we just truly freestyling and we're seeing the exact same things. As always, boss, you work hard. Love the show, sir. Appreciate you, too, coach. And let's let's get it. Go Cowboys. Go Cowboys. All right, that's Coach. That's Coach, and he's from my city. He's from my community. Uh, he's a local coach. He, I played against him, uh, you know, so. But I, I got major love for Coach. He definitely, 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 definitely uh, know what he's talking about. So I see a lot of y'all saying y'all out on Sue. That's fine. I'm cool with that because uh, it's a lot more he right and we go get into that we go get into all the free agents that's available to come in and potentially I, I agree with what he said with Campbell I agree with what he said with Robinson I got me about six more that I'm gonna be able to add to that rotation of people that could come in and help us out so yeah let's get them likes up real quick because I'm seeing y'all in the channel and y'all keep saying that that mean our, our likes ratio is off so let's get them likes up real quick and then I want to get into some film, but I'm gonna call a couple of y'all back. So Prince, um, I'm gonna call you back and Marcus Sutton, I'm gonna call you back as well because I see where you called in. It's an, it's, I'm gonna be calling you from an 832 number, Marcus. So y'all sit back, man. I'm gonna get all these calls, people that called me, uh, you know, cause I'm, I'm working this backup system while I'm also working on getting our systems restored. And I already tested this, and uh, y'all said that y'all liked it. We only got 38 likes? Oh, yeah, y'all got to get them up, man. Come on now. All right, so I'm calling you now, Marcus. All right, so Marcus didn't pick up. Hold on, I'm going to call Prince. Give me one second. Let me call Prince. Yeah, y'all give me one second. Just to feed in these other calls. Give me one second. And I will co call Coach Marv. Hello? Prince. Hey, this this Boss Cowboy, man. I'm calling from the Boss Cowboy Show. Yes, sir. 
What you got, big dog? Man, I'm just what I'm. I really want Bobby Wagner, man. Yeah, I really do. Cause I mean, cause it would be foolish for the Dallas Cowboys to not go get Ragnar. Because LVE, don't get me wrong, I like LVE, but he's injury prone. You can't trust him to stay healthy. Right. You can't trust him. It would be foolish for them to just go with LVE and them young linebackers. Cause Ragnar can teach those young linebackers. He can develop them. Teach yeah. them how to play it the right way. The right way. And we need a dominant defensive tackle. I mean, yeah. I mean, yes, we need a run stopper, but we also need somebody that can bring pressure from the inside to get to the quarterback. Yeah. And see, I, you know what? This is the thing. Um, hopefully, that's why I said earlier, hopefully with the signing of Gilmore and the signing of Brandon Cooks, I'm really hoping that people that might have been on the fence and maybe even a little bit insulted at their initial offers by the Cowboys, hopefully their their quest for more and more greatness make them come on back to the table. Because I, I'm still trying to understand Prince. This Prince, right? Yes, sir. I'm still trying to understand how Cowboy Nation really thinks that LVE is just as good as Bobby Wagner. It's like, oh no, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh no, what? Not even close. Oh, oh, don't get me wrong. LVE is a really good player. But yeah, he's a right good now. player, but Let's, no. <laughs> Bobby Wagner is an All-Pro linebacker, and he's a future Hall of Famer. Oh no. God, yeah. Who, whoever would even say that is is. Had his lax in intelligence. Wait, 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 wait! I don't want to insult them too bad. <laughs> so, okay, can right. you say whatever you said? Just put a little bit of sugar on it. Yes, I mean, it will. It will be really stupid for them to even think that. <laughs> that must say it'd be really stupid. Is that the best you can do? Well, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be honest with you, dog. I'm, that's like what? You can't put LVE and Bobby Wagner on the same level. You I can't. Understand? You really can't. Just being honest, they not on the same level. They just not. They not even close. Yeah, they not. And also, they not even close. Right. No. Yeah. No. Bobby Wagner is four times the player LVE is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think some of Cowboy Nation, we fall in love with certain ones. We do. Uh, we do. So it, it's natural. It's you know, LV is that guy that's likable. He's a leader and all that kind of stuff. So I think people get caught up into that and not really looking at the film. If you really look at the film, they not yes. close. It's just not even no. close. No, sir. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Don't be wrong, LVE's a really good player, but LVE, it would be great to have Bobby Wagner to be there, right there to be that anchor on that defense. Yeah. He would be the anchor, the glue. When we get Bobby Wagner and we get a good defensive tackle, the defense is set. Right. Yeah. The defense is set, and we can focus on adding, adding pieces to the offense. Right. And then if we have to, we can go. All in on offense through the draft. Right, right, yeah. No, I agree. I agree, man. You, 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 you kicking that juice, bro. You kicking that juice. So let me ask you a question, Prince. So far, what would you grade the Dallas Cowboys offseason moves and the free agency? I would give them. I would give them an A minus for now. You still giving them an A minus, even though we didn't get Bobby Wagner. You giving them an A minus? Well, maybe a B. I would say a B. Now, if we get Bobby Wagner, then and then it'll be an A plus. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Bobby Wagner, it, would it just be that acquisition, or would it be uh, another acquisition like Bobby Wagner with a quality, another quality defensive tackle? Right. Is like, uh, like I said, uh, I just um, oh man. I, um, May I put an input on Sue? I would. Uh, I I like Sue. Sue can still play. He can still he can still play, and he he would be better than what we have on the on the roster right now. Yeah. Yeah. 
I definitely. Anybody is better than what we have as a defensive tackle right now on that roster. I'm not trying to dog Neville Gallimore or uh, Osu. Uh, Osu uh, you, you know what I'm trying to say. But let's be honest, they are small. Right. They, they get beat up on the line, and we get dominated against the run. And they get dominated against the run, and we can't afford to keep having the same issue every year. No, nah, that's true. No, nah, that's very true, man. So, like, and um, I will say this though, man. I'm I'm like you. Um, I'm around B plus A minus. And if they got Bobby Wagner, and if they got them a quality, another quality one tick with Fowler, yes. I will move it from A minus to a hundred and ten. I would actually make it a hundred and twenty as yeah. on a scale of one to one hundred and on yes. top of that i would i would forgive them of all their sins right i would forgive them for jimmy johnson i will forgive yes. them for amari <laughs> yes. i would just be full of forgiveness prince yeah. Yeah. i agree i agree anyway, i would just be for that? yeah go if ahead Calais, Campbell, Campbell, oh yeah I will be so happy. I will be so happy. I will, you won't hear a complaint <laughs> a whole year at all. A whole then, year? A whole year? Yeah, okay, maybe not the whole year, but we go to the Super Bowl. We go to the Super Bowl and win. Oh, I'll be so happy. I'll be in the streets dancing. Yes. I'll be in the streets dancing. Hell, hell, shit. Hell, to be honest, I might just. I might just go get me a, a, a Super Bowl ticket to go to Vegas. Ooh. The Cowboys in Las Vegas doing the Super Bowl, you know it's going to be stupid. Yes. Hold on, I got a super chat. Michael Williams say, besides him being a great player, I would want Wagner to pass on wisdom to Michael Parsons. Let me read this other super chat, too. I don't want to stack up too much. Give me one second, big dog. Matt said, Matt said uh, Bobby Wagner's the GOAT. LV is an okay player, not on the same level. Facts. And I want uh, Fowler back, too. We need him on this team. Yeah. Amen, bro. I definitely want Fowler back. I would be shocked if this next move is not about Fowler. Uh, I really would. I would be shocked, you know. But, hey, Prince, man, um, let me get to a couple of more calls, man. Thank you for calling in, big dog. You made the show great. Uh, let's continue to get it, man. And uh, we go if if we get our guys, the guys that we want, we will get the Dallas Cowboys at least. Let's say the first four weeks off with no complaints. I can't go all season without complaining. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, thanks for the call, Matt. Yeah, good night, boss. All right, big bro. All right, bro. All right, so so George just called in. Let me get George in uh, as well. So George, I'm finna call you, brother. Uh, we finna, you know, get get these calls going. Hold on, real quick. All right, hold on. I'm calling you now, George. Give me one second. It's gonna be coming from a. It's gonna be coming from an eight three two number. So, you know, so we just working out Plan B. Uh, so when y'all call in, I'm calling out with the, uh, you know, with a different phone system. So that give me one second. So we just doing what we gotta do, man, to get these freestyles going. And and I'm always had this plan B in effect. I'm just giving it a good run, then we go get into this film. Hello. George. Yes, sir. All right, man. We got you on the show, man. It's Boss Cow, Boss Sports. Yes, sir. Man, call me Marcus. That's how you to go back. <laughs> okay, Marcus, let's get it. What you got, big dog? Yes, sir. Man, look here. I'm loving this all season, man. <laughs> what I love about it, it look like that McCarthy and then when they're trying to get their guys in the system. Yeah. The guys that they want. Yeah. And that really makes me happy. So, and, and then as far as the way they're doing the contracts, you know, the, the reason I feel so good about this is that we still have the flexibility to get, I'm looking at Fowler and Wagner coming in real soon. Yeah. I hope so. At least one of them. At least one. And, and think about it. I don't even know which one, man. I, I will value the most. Ooh. We, we know we need both. Ooh. 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 We need Wagner for the insurance for LVE. I like LVE 
But I play linebacker too. But to me, when you play linebacker, you have to attack. He's not an attacking type linebacker. Right. He's more like a, I'm going to get in the way and hopefully no will come on. Right. For us to make the hit together. I mean, I want you to come in there like a car accident and just create a big power up. Yeah. And I don't see that from him sometimes. It gets too hesitant for me. No, I agree with you. No. And then while they get fouler, it's like you said. Look at his production compared to Randy Gregory. And that that deal is a thousand percent better. Dollar show what he can do last year. Why don't people get that, Marcus? Why don't people get that? That's the part I don't think people get. Is that how Fowler is already better than Randy Gregory? Exactly. Exactly. And the, and the thing about it is, if he had those snaps, and I like Dawn Armstrong. Imagine he had those amount of snaps. I mean, more sacks he had. Oh, man. Fowler would have had double digit sacks if he had the same snaps as Armstrong. He would likely be double digit sacks. And he would definitely, definitely have way more pressures. It is no doubt. No doubt. Now, I also think he's a pro bowler if he had those attempts and those plays. But on top of that, man, I mean, the thing about it, it's like a point of redemption tour this uh, all season has been for me. You know, now they're, they're righting their wrongs, almost like a repentance type deal, what they're doing. And I'm loving it, you know. Yeah. About it. Like you said, everybody now, you know, feel it, they can't say a word because everybody running out there like it's, like, you know, cut on the light on the road, just no more to scatter it out of there, you know. Nobody cares about the feeling of the and they, they know it. They try to come back, like, trying to come as oh, you know, like, cooks is like the hop. It might not be me, huh? But compare him to Noah Brown and you tell me <laughs> how we came out. Right. I'm just saying. Right. Exactly. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not even close. Upgrade. Right. You gotta be the upgrade. <laughs> Super upgrade. You want to say, Brown? Compare that again and tell me how we came out. Right. Now, we won 12 games with Noah Brown and Anthony Brown. <laughs> so you're going to tell me these guys are going to help us win more? Exactly. Exactly. And see, this is why, as Marcus, let me ask you a question. I should have asked Prince this too. Are we getting to the point of Super Bowl or bus? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're, we're almost getting there. I think the main part of it getting to now is that McCarthy is getting his guys. Yeah. And I think McCarthy and Ben Quinn is getting the guys. The over Gene, if you look at it, those guys are easing out the way. They're getting the players they want because McCarthy and Dan Quinn know what systems they want to run. So now with this roster being reset with the guys they want to create and do the plays, it's looking like we're going towards a direction Super Bowl or bust. But I just think of it this way. If we didn't, if we didn't let him do this a couple of years ago, who knows? <laughs> Have another one or two right now. That's what I said. That's exactly what I said yesterday. You know, we what you just said is exactly what I said yesterday. Is that basically they need to reset the clock. There you go. There you go. The thing is now, you know, Bellinelli got never. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. The thing about it is, yeah. Yeah. Those guys, they're the cooks. Yeah. yeah. Right. All Steven will McClain and Jeremy do. You don't have the contract details, but that guy said, look, I want him. He's the man I need. Make it work. Right. And now the way he's finan- they are financing his contract and all this money is keep getting built up and left over. There's another move coming. Yeah, it's another I said move. Earlier on Twitter, there's another move coming. I don't know who it is. But I'm thinking it's going to be a uh, follow of Bobby Wagner. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking one of those two. Yeah. It's not both. Man, I would cry if it was both. I would cry. I would yes, literally sir. cry real tears of joy, Marcus. It'd be like past the Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> past the Kool Aid. Past 
Pass the Kool Aid. Pass the Kool Aid. Uh, man, I appreciate the call, Marcus, man. Appreciate you calling in, making sure. your voice better, big dog. Man, you know, it's been a long time since I talked to you, man. I was the one working with you last year with those linebackers of Stanley, you know, the LBE thing then. Hey man, hey, I, Marcus. You know we still struggling with these old funky old phones, man. So this that's the hardest part of producing for me. Some some people they get them phones in there like it ain't nothing. The hardest man. part is the sound, boy. I swear. So be patient with me, man. We go get this stuff really, you know, rolling right. Man, you know I'm patient with you, man. Love your show, love your content. Love what you guys do. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. All right, man. Thanks, Marcus. Yes, sir. Have a great night, big you dog. T- you too, big dog. All right. All right, that was Marcus. And I appreciate it, man. That was a real good call, man. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed that. I'm going to take a little quick break from Freestyle and Amp. Amp, if you watching still, bro, let me know if I can call you. Coach Marv, uh, let me know if I can call you. Uh, I just want to I, I just want to make sure y'all available because you know Amp got a newborn so you know we gotta you know it's always hard to get Amp in here because he is he he doing the work of anybody with newborns y'all know how that is I had two sons that's real um, so anyway all right I wanted to get it to some film all right so oh let me make sure that I had everything uh, first give me one second I just want to make sure I, oh. I want to just show one other thing before I get into this film, all right? And this is going to be rough. Okay, okay, um, you said call you. Okay, I, I'm going to call you right after this. I'm going to call you. Before I get into the film, um, I'm going to call you, bro. And we're going to just talk some ball. But I just want to show y'all something real quick. Uh, and then I'm going to call Amp. And then I'm going to get into some film. Because this film session, you're going to want to see it. It's a raw film session that I'm going to do, too. It's not cut up. It's not cute. It's not highlights. It's not low lights. It's going to be everything. And I'm going to kind of just explain it once we get into it. Okay, so Coach Marv said he ready as well. Okay, so I got two on deck. Uh, so let me first talk about this, and then I'm going to call Amp and Coach Marv because, you know, they the go-to guys. You know, they they real killers in the community and up-and-coming YouTubers. So... We want to always kind of keep them guys working because they obviously worth their salt one and two. Uh, they bring a lot of value to all of us. So we go call them and check it. But I want to show y'all something. We had, I don't know if y'all remember this, but Dan Rogers came to the show and debated. We had us a very, very civil, graceful debate. Uh, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I didn't know if it was going to be full of ego. I didn't know if it was going to be some back and forth. I didn't know if I was going to have to shoot him figuratively, obviously, figuratively. Uh, y'all know what I mean by shoot. So, you know. If we locked in, you know, switching up. And then Matt said with a super chat, congrats on your new son, uh, Amp, so he sent a super chat to say that too, man. That's love. So, but no, but Dan Rogers, he 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 came on, he debated, he was very civil. It ended up being, you know, uh, you know, we debated Kelly Moore. I don't know if y'all remember that, but he was with Blocking in the Bars. But this is the deal that he brought out. This is also why I'm very high on the Dallas Cowboys in the off seasons because he he pointed to a trend that we've been referring to on this show for years. And that's the Dallas Cowboys intentionally targeting Marshall's free agents to fill their holes. And it's working. That's why I've been saying and I stand by this. Jerry is better than Howie. Howie can kiss my whole butt. And I mean that. Jerry can kiss me all over. Not Jerry, Howie. All the way over. I don't care that they made it to a Super Bowl. Put it like this. It would have been us or them anyway. It should have been us or them anyway. I guarantee if we would have knocked out Purdy in the first quarter, we would have been moving on too. And if we wouldn't have had Kellen Moore throwing the ball all over Green Bay in the fourth quarter, we would have been the number one seed too. So we never was a far away from Philly ever. Even when we got rid of Amara, we still was just as good with Philly going all in. So I ain't trying to hear a damn thing about Howard. And I mean that. 
and I mean that. And I, I can't wait till some other Cowboy fans really join me, sticking their chests out against all this sucking up to Philly. It's getting on my nerves. Them funky chumps are one and four in the Super Bowl, and we actually got the nerve to try to act like they the standard. They ain't the damn standard. Dak is eight and three versus Howie and them funky green birds. But just because they got a couple of names that we wish we would have got, we want to just crown them like they over us in team building and they not. I'm sick of hearing it. It don't make no sense if you use your brain. Now, if you going with what's popular and what's said the most, yeah, you'll go ahead and suck up to Howie. But I ain't sucking up to no freaking Howie because I've been watching the pattern of the Dallas Cowboys and we've been smoking Philly. Yeah, so anyway, but I want to show this from Dan Rogers, just kind of the pattern. So he talked about the, he said, Cooks make it 10 straight years. The Cowboys have gotten another team's first. So we've been talking about this, you know? So Rolando McClain, right? Eighth overall pick. Brandon Whedon, that actually was not a bad pick. Yeah, see, some of y'all say it's about getting the ball, so you missed my point. See, and it's not about getting the balls. See, that's Philly standard. Let me let me talk to one of my brothers real quick. I ain't go I ain't gonna beat you up too bad, bro. But me and you got a box on this, bro. We got a box on this, bro. Cowboy fans, let's let's talk. He said it's about getting the balls. No, it's not about getting the balls. It's about winning balls. It's not about getting to balls. That's a Philly standard. To get to the bowl is a Philly standard. To win the bowl is a Dallas standard. So, and then that's why I said, even last year and the year before then, Dallas Cowboys should have been because they had the most talent the last two years. The only reason we won even the number one seed was because we lost to Green Bay and we was up on them by 14 points in the fourth quarter. And we lost to the Jags and we was up on them as well. Both of those games, we should have easily closed out by controlling the clock, running the ball, being very smart, going, get, going through the whole play clock before we ran a play instead of running fast-paced offense. So their number one seed was the Giants, who we ain't lost to in too high long. Then when they play San Fran, they lose Purdy in the first quarter. So yeah, we keep throwing that. It's about the bowl as if they didn't have a softer road than we did. Their schedule was weaker than ours. We had to face the Bengals in the front end. We had to face the Rams on the front end. They had to face all them teams on the back end and they had the weakest schedule that, that last year. So no, it's not about getting to a bowl. It's about winning a bowl. And when you look at them and their bowl performance, I don't want to be funky Philly. They won and four when they go to the bowl. They can keep that. I don't want that. That's why I'm saying with the Dallas Cowboys right now, we should be having an expectation that it should be Super Bowl or bust because that's our standard. Our standard is to win the Super Bowl, not get to a Super Bowl. And that's why I'm getting sick of even Cowboy Nation saying stuff like, I just want to see an NFC championship or I just want a bowl appearance. I don't want neither. Either you win the shit or you don't. I don't want appearances. I want to win the thing. Yeah. So I'm not cool with appearances. I'm gonna give you a nice cookie for your appearance. But if you don't win the thing, you're nothing. You are the number one loser. I'm gonna tell you right now, Philly is the number one loser because they was the first. They lost in the Super Bowl, which makes them second, which makes them the number one loser. And I ain't trying to all this, oh yeah, I just want to be fair. I'm going to keep it real is real. No, real is not real. Real is not real. Anybody saying that uh, that Howie, who had to basically go all in just to keep up with Dallas, we over here taking away Amari, and we still beat them last year without Amari. So why, why in the hell would I have known Howie? I'm not anointing that dude. I don't care if the whole cowboy community sucking up the highway. I will stand alone and I will say it with my chest and with all my balls and with all my nuts that we are running loops around them suckers. 
I don't care what nobody say about that. Eight and see, because if it would have been another team, put it like this: if Philly was eight and three versus us, oh, everybody be saying Philly way better than us. But see, it's only the Dallas Cowboys that can be eight and three versus Philly, but we still saying they are running loose around us. I don't get us. <laughs> How can you numerically own a team? How can you just own and just outright take them to prison and, and make them sleep on the bottom bunk? And then while they sleeping on the bottom bunk, we still go give them award like they better than us. Like, where do we do that? No, the fact that we eight and three and the fact that they went all in and the fact that they are literally melting down right now. They are melting down. The number one free agent that they wanted was CJ. They didn't get him. He went to Detroit. That, the Dallas Cowboys are retaining almost everybody and improving on top of that, and they still have not went all in. This is still not the Dallas Cowboys going all in. This is the Dallas Cowboys in the middle. This is in the middle. And in the middle, we got Brandon Cooks. And in the middle, we got Gilmore. The Dallas Cowboys have yet to go all in, and we still smoking that trash over there. I don't apologize either, man. Y'all can suck up to them all you want. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. I ain't, all that realism. Man, I ain't trying to. Then it ain't even realism. I get sick of it. Man, I'm going to tell you, man, I'm, I'm going to say this one more thing before I get into this. The Cowboy fans, I ain't going to lie to get on my nerves. The most is the ones that come in and say, hey, I'm a Cowboy fan. I've been a Cowboy fan since X. I've been a Cowboy fan since 60. I've been a Cowboy fan since 19. I don't care, bro. That don't make you like an expert just because you older. You know what I mean? It don't. I've been a Cowboy fan, or and whenever they start their context with, I'm a Cowboy fan, and whenever they say that, they finna say something like very whack right behind it generally. I'm a Cowboy fan. Like they give you a right to hate on your team or be a pessimist on your team or be, oh, I'm a realist though. No, you not. You scared. Because see, if we would have been any other team that would have went 12 and 5 two years in a row, and they still retaining most of their team, and that team is mostly young, anybody with common sense would be saying, you know what, that team should be a top four contender. They should at least be favored. The, put it like this. Allen them ain't never won nothing. The Buffalo Bills ain't never won nothing. And out the blue, just from, just from the offseason moves, people were saying they the favorites to win the Super Bowl. But we can't say that about our own team. And they, and, and they ain't won nothing. The Buffalo Bills only had a competitive game against KC. And they looked at one little old fucking competitive game where they felt like Allen just needed one more overtime and he could have maybe beat Mahomes. And they just favored them for the whole season until they choked it off last year. So if people can just put Buffalo up there out the blue, I can't put the Dallas Cowboys. 12 and 5, two years in a row with dysfunction? The dysfunction, man, listen, I'm not doing it with that. I'm not doing this old Philly stuff today. And this is the main reason what I was getting ready to talk about that the Dallas Cowboys have been smoking Philly. It been from these Marshalls free agents. So Brandon Whedon won bad. I don't know if y'all remember, but Darren McFadden got a thousand yards and he was about a hundred years old. In 2015, remember in 2015, we signed fourth overall pick, Darren McFadden. I used to call him Knock Need McFadden. And he got a thousand yards after Randall got caught stealing underwear. We made him the full time back right before we acquired Zeke in the draft. And he still yet had a thousand yards. Mark Sanchez also was a good pick, low key, because remember, he was the number one whisperer to Dak Prescott. I know a lot of people like to say Romo was in Dak ear, but that wasn't true. It was mostly Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez was, and see, people forgot about Jonathan Cooper. Do y'all remember Jonathan Cooper? We signed him, seventh overall pick. Another Marshalls went seventh overall. Yeah, y'all remember that? We had no problem with left guard when Jonathan Cooper was playing. Then Deontay Jones was another good Marshalls. 
you know? He remember, he played D tackle for us, came from Green Bay. Then obviously we know about Amari Tavon Austin wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. You know, he never really quite lived up to his first round status, but he was a good role player for the Dallas Cowboys. Pretty decent special teamer. Then Robert Quinn, you know we hit that one out the box. I've been talking about that, you know? We hit that one out the box, got 10 sacks out of him. Then Alden Smith even for a little while was good, you know? He started off with about six sacks before he fell off a cliff with a horrible D coordinator, y'all remember that? Jerry McCoy, I mean, let's be honest what that ended up being. Yeah, that just never kind of worked out, just the injury history then. Dun Tyree Poe, he was basically, you know. <laughs> See, I would say probably them two right there probably messed it up for the next couple of years because they was almost like self fulfilling pop prophecies. Then you had Cameron Irvin, the 19 overall pick. Then you had Ha Ha Clint Dix. That whole offseason was. But we ramped it up even more with Malik Hooker. We talked about that. Neil, we talked about him before. Uh, Marshalls. Uh, Deontay Fowler. Yeah. Anthony Barr. Anthony Barr. Um... Yeah. And then Xavier Rhodes. He came in. It was really kind of hard to say what Xavier Rose was, because he really didn't have a lot of time. And then you had Tack McKinley. Uh, we really never we, we really never saw him. But see, this is, this is what Jerry was talking about when he said that he likes the middle. And I like it. I like the middle. I, I've been saying going after the marshals is to me the perfect way to do it because, oh, and I like how Dan finished this. I like what Dan said at the end, because it's exactly what I've been saying too. Check this out. He said, these outcomes are good justifications for why the Cowboys do what they do. They make low cost investments because they are low risk and they offer a greater chance for players to outperform their costs. When it doesn't work, they cut them and move on. And outside of a terrible free agency in 2020, and that's the that's the Poe year, that's the McCoy year, and that's the high-high year, the Cowboys tend to stay away from winning the bidding war on outside free agents, I agree. And he said, however, they are not opposed to surrendering draft capital if it brings a proven talent at a position of need to their team. The first round streak is kind of cool, but the roster building method should make fans feel better about how this team operates. I 100%, I 100% agree. I 100% agree. And that's why I've been saying, if you look close, the moves that we just made are really Marshall's free agents. Gilmore is another Marshall's free agent. See, former greatness that we getting on the discount. And then obviously Brandon Cook. This is truly a winning formula and this is how we've been busting teams across their face. It's more so about what do we do with that talent when they get here. That's to me where we've been dropping the ball. But in terms of getting them in the building, the Dallas Cowboys have been doing an excellent job. And I think what we got to do is separate them building teams from them operating teams. So when it comes down to team building, they should get a high score from all of us. When it comes down to operating the team, that's where we should be giving them lower scores. But this year, we should be giving them high scores because they're actually operating football way better this year. They're not throwing their players under the bus. You're not hearing no necessary unnecessary leaks. They let Zeke go at the front end of the free agency, not the back end of the free agency. We show class and respect for a guy that gave up a lot. So I'm just, you know, I'm just keeping it real, man. I see this totally different than other people, man, but I don't mind where I stand on that. Let me first, before we get into this film, let me call call Amp, and then I'm going to call Coach Marv. We'll talk some ball with him real quick. Y'all give me one second, man. Let me, um, let me, let me get this going real quick. And while we doing that, and we getting ready to talk some ball, because I'm going to show y'all some film. Um, it's going to be worth it too, man. I know y'all hanging out late. I know a lot of y'all got to go to work. But y'all sit back, man. Um, y'all sit back, hang out with your boy boss, man. We're going to go through some film together. We're going to talk, talk it through. <laughs> y'all give your boy boss cap for one second, man. Get my balls in here. Hey, homie, what's good, man? What's up with it? What's up with it, Amp? What you got, big dog? Man, I'm feeling good, dog. 
it's, it's, it's got a good look. It's got a good smell to it, man. You sure you I don't smell we... no farts? No, man. I, 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 I think we got that. Mm-hmm. George, I love mm-hmm. That's another one for that. George Oloka, he won the first, though. No, but he was he was that dude. He just when he got lost in a, in a big room. He, he did. He caught up around with, with, with Xavier and all the other cats, but man, it, <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I'm optimistic because obviously our strength is the draft, right? Right. But I felt like we have put too much emphasis on the draft over the last couple of years. I agree. And the fact that we are plugging holes and we're plugging holes this early, it's almost as if, matter of fact, let me let, let me make it plain. You got a gig, you making good bread, right? Mm-hmm. And then you come up on a second gig, right? But your first gig was enough to take care of your bills and for you to have some play money. Mm-hmm. So there is no reason why when you get this second gig, right, you should be dipping into that stash. That should just be unseen, untouchable to the side. Right. That's the kind of idea I want us to have going into this draft. Act like you don't have those seven picks. And as much as you can possibly do, as much as Will McClay can wheel and deal, between now and April, do so. But I will say this. Before we... And I'm going to use your term right here. Before we bring in any more bastards, I need to see some sons get signed. Mmm. Because you got sons right now that's looking at a couple of bastards that came in the building. And them sons going to start feeling like bastards if they don't get blessed by daddy. Okay, you got you to gotta identify them sons. What sons? <laughs> One of them sons obviously is Diggs. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> CD is another one. Um, and, and then with them two, it's going to be one of the other. One can get signed this year, the other one got to wait till next year. Um, uh, Terrence Steele is another son. You know, heard or not, he's still a son. <clears throat> I want to see him get signed before we start bringing more bastards into the building. Mm. Um, And then, this is off topic, but I couldn't help but notice, right? Now, we slapped a franchise tag on Dalton Schultz, and that was telling some change. And he hit the free agent market, and he only got nine, bro, that hurt. Because looking at it hindsight, that's money that didn't have to be spent. That's actually more change we could have had in the bank last year. And hell, if we had got him a deal last year, then one less we might have had to worry about. But it's cool, though, you know. I ain't crying over spilt shorts. But, uh, yeah, man, I just want to see us, you know, Lock in some of these guys who who have been an instrumental part in our recent success. Oh, um, you over here yeah. sounding like Stephen Jones right now. Hey, I ain't mad at it though. It's good logic. It's real good logic. Because yeah. it's 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 giving it's giving super flexibility. Yeah. Um, because right now it's just like you know we ain't got to be oh I need this position here and I need that position here. It, it gives us a luxury that not a lot of people are talking about, and that's just being really truthfully able to pick the best player available because you're plugging up these holes. And like you said on your show last night, Big Mike likes depth, solid depth, backups. He likes to have depth across the team. And that's the way it's starting to shape and pan out. Um, I did see the information about Isaac Alicorn, um, and it's interesting um, within itself, but it does show some promise. 
I'm not going to get my hopes up. And it's a name that I want to just throw out here just randomly. I just want people to hear this thing. And it's a name we currently have on our roster. Ian Bunting. He is the tallest person on our team. And he is currently listed as tight end. I don't know if we picked him up on one of those future deals or whatever. Um, somebody who might have scooped at the end of the season. Um, he played for Cal, if I'm not mistaken. But he's got hands, and the man knows how to get open. Um, and this is a question I got for you, boss. What the hell happened to Tank McKinley? Oh, no, man. Thank Yeah. Did I, did I miss something? <laughs> He's a Marshalls, but he was an unused Marshalls, man. They left him in the store or something, bro. Bro, we need to go back and get that bag. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all I'm just saying. This is a damn you good got, call, bro, because you, cause you raise it, boy. You pull it out. Man, you've been looking on the rocks, haven't you, dog? Ooh. Bro, we... I mean, because... We were getting excited about it last year, and tank disappeared as quickly as COVID disappeared, bro. Oh, 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 oh. I swear to God, <laughs> like, he just fell off the face as quick as he came, as as quick as he left. Man, that's a damn good point, Elp. Elp, I don't like, know what. I'm gonna look into that. I'm gonna look into that because this is the funny thing about Tack. Tack is not on the free agent list, bro. It's like we stashing him. That's a damn good point. I ain't even thinking that. Because <laughs> he not on the free agent list, bro. That's the film breakdown and all of that. It was talking about, you know, systems he used to be in and previously working with Dan Quinn and all that damn work. And we just didn't see him, bro. And we signed him in November, but it just never mustered up to be anything. And... I know Hankins went down, and then I know he was playing with the D line, but we never played with Tag. Hey, they, so, is, is the stream lagging? I'm seeing some people say the stream look like it's lagging. Is the stream lagging? I don't. Y'all, let me know if the stream is lagging. But go ahead, out. But yeah, man, that's a that's the that's the biggest question I had, bro. Um, other than that, everything else looks solid. And you saw me quote your tweet today. Uh, I feel really confident about our team, but I just would like to see us uh, potentially go ahead and get one of those uh, uh, super clearance uh, veteran tight end and running back. Um, I haven't done my research on uh, those two rooms as far as who's still available in free agency, but you know, as the week goes on, I'm going to dig and I'm going to find and I'm going to call you. But uh, appreciate the love in the chat. Um, 2023, man, it's our year. I talked to a Cowboys fan this past weekend, and he was a little pessimistic about the moves that we were making. And I said, you tell me who's better in the NFC East. He was looking at me with a dumb face. I said, can you name five teams better than us in the NFC conference itself? He continued to look at me with a dull face. So guess what? People can continue to join on us and do what they've been doing over the course of the years. But guess what? Keep that same energy. Because when we putting on conference championship hats and we getting ready to go to that dance, guess what? It's too late. Y'all be blessed. Hold it down. Appreciate it, big dog. All right. Man, hold on, bro. They say the stream lagging. So is the stream lagging? Is it still lagging? Y'all let me know, man. Cause I don't want to get into no film session that we not gonna see. All right. Let me see. So I, I keep seeing y'all say it's lagging. Is it lagging still or is it back? Y'all let me know before I get into this film session. Somebody say boss has reached my data cap. Is it lagging that bad? All right, so Brian said no, because I'm not seeing no lag at all. And then Eric said it's good. Then Draw Beasley say, yes, it's lagging. So F Facebook is saying there's no lag. Okay, then it said you're good now. 
It's good now. You're good. Okay. Okay. We good. I don't know what happened, y'all. See, listen, y'all. I'm telling y'all, man. This stuff, I don't know what be happening. And I don't connect to Wi-Fi. I'm directly lined in. I never do Wi-Fi connections because it's unreliable. So I'm directly connected to my router. Directly connected to it. So, all right. So since we good, uh, I'm going to save Coach Maul to the end. Let me go ahead and get into this film real quick. Hopefully, Coach Maul pick up when I call. But what I want to talk about and show y'all was some film on Gilmore, right? So I'm gonna show y'all some real quick. So here is the opponents from the Colts, right? Oh, they say they missed the phone call, so you didn't hear that phone call. Okay, good dog. All right, so let me just, I'm gonna chill on the phones for right now until we figure out what's going on or what caused that lag. All right, so anyway, <clears throat> obviously this is the list of the opponents. So I'm gonna leave it open to y'all what film we should watch of Gilmore. Now, the first, I'm gonna tell y'all the first thing I did the very first thing that I did from the Gilmore signing, the very first film that I went to watch, take a guess. Take a guess. What do y'all think was the very first film that I that I turned on? The very first film that I turned on was the Colts versus the Eagles. I think a good one also would be KC. I see some of y'all saying Commanders. I put it on, obviously, Philly because of their weapons, right? So, obviously, they have good weapons over there. D. Smith and Brown. And so, I want to see, obviously, first how Gilmore matched up against real good receivers that we're going to watch or we're going to play twice, right? That was first. So then, obviously, I showed y'all the film on Minnesota. So I'm going to just do something different today. I'm going to just, this is why I said on the thumbnail, we're doing raw film, all right? It's going to be raw. It's not going to be cut up. It's not going to be clean. It's not going to be edited. It's not going to be cute. It's going to be just what it is. All right, so let me go to it first, and I'm going to go to first Philly. All right, so Philly was week 11, so let me go to week 11. I'm going to pick Philly, and we go get into this raw film. Uh, it's Trust me, it's not pretty, but it is what it is. All right, so here we go. So let me turn it on. All right, so I got it on the all 22. All right, so we ready to go. So here we go. So we just waiting on the, I'm, all right, so here we go. So we got the film. So y'all give me one second. Let me put my face on this. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna do is just looking at the raw film is and we trying to get a feel we go look at obviously uh, Philly on offense so here we go so it'll start after this punt so at 937 and I'm gonna just let it play this ain't gonna even be that fancy this ain't gonna be nothing pretty or nothing yeah it's taking a little bit long though all right, so hold on real quick. So I'm at 937. All right, here we go. So we got Gilmore up here to the top right. So in the very first play, he looked like he was playing a soft cover two, and he gave up a slant route. Right, so just because, and I'm just keep just looking at it. So this, so we looking at it, and, and it looked like just keeping it real on the first play also looked like he was loafing. So now we got him sitting here at the bottom, right? 
so nothing there no big deal so i'm just letting it run this is raw fam this is raw this is where you just kind of letting it run and you just looking at all of his habits you're looking at all of his performances and you're just letting it run i'm not picking out plays that's good i'm not picking out plays that's bad i'm just letting it run so then we got gilmore at bottom watching him try to beat off a block he kind of got stuck on that block right there i wouldn't have liked it i wouldn't have liked that he was staying on that block but that's cool but just kind of just letting it run and just looking at him because i'm trying to look at gilmore i like how he knocked his hand off now we got gilmore at the bottom left right here they show block down let's see you make a tackle that's perfect and that's exactly what you want to see that's perfectly what you want to see. And my boy say he liked the film raw. Me too. I like raw film. That's why I wanted to do it with y'all. It was a clear block down where when they block down, you got to go make that tackle. And he did. That's what you want to see. So we got Gilmore at the top right. We just letting it run. This definitely passed. They definitely playing a cover two. It really was no action right there. No action. You know. So still letting it run just taking a look at gilmore looking at him against our division opponent they're not our rival they're our opponent all right so they punt so in that first series i'd be like you know that was pretty decent i didn't like that he was loafing i didn't like that on the first play but then other than that i said okay that was at least a b all right so now we go into the second defensive series looking at gilmore because i'm trying to watch him versus yep and gilmore lost on that one just keeping it real can we just keep it real yeah watching him on brown brown beat him across yep ran a drag and brown won mm -hmm. and we just letting it play too i'm not adding nothing i'm not taking nothing away from it i'm just looking at it i'm just looking at what is he doing against Brown and D. Smith. It's buffering again? Oh man, I'm finna cut the stream, bro. I'm not finna deal with this. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. I really wanted to get into this, but I can't I can't do it if it's buffering. I apologize. Uh so is it back or is it buffering? Because I'm trying to uh it's buffering. I don't know what's going on, y'all. I don't know why it's buffering. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do. Because I really wanted to get into this. Because, see, to me, I was going to really break down. Damn. I'm sorry it's buffering, y'all. Damn. Man, I don't know what's going on. This is Murphy. Murphy kind of having a way. It's never buffered. I never had a buffering problem. I've never had a buffering problem. So they saying it's not buffering on Facebook. It's buffering on YouTube. See, everybody that's on Facebook say it's clean. They ain't having no problem because it's also not buffering on my end. Yeah, so everybody on Facebook, like, it ain't buffered at all. So it's, a, it's YouTube. So, and sometimes, and I'm going to tell you what's going on, just... Okay, so I see what's going on, and this happened before with YouTube. Every now and then, YouTube, they working on stuff on the back end, and it might get a little bit glitchy. Because, see, they see, yeah, everybody on YouTube saying it's lagging. Everybody on Facebook that's watching saying it's all good. All right, so listen, y'all. I'm going to have to cut the stream because I don't control that. That part I don't control. I sincerely apologize, y'all. I'm going to try to maybe try to get into this later. Uh, so let me just say this in the meantime. I really want to get into this. I'm sorry I won't be able to get into this tonight. Because uh, I just wanted to go through a film session and a real one. Not no fake one. Not no highlight. Not no low light. I wanted to get into a real film session to really give real analysis on these players. Not the hype analysis. Not the sugar analysis. The real analysis of what we really looking at. And my boy say, don't punish Facebook. I know. But see, this is the thing. <laughs> my boy Brian Smith say, don't punish Facebook. Uh... 
<laughs> but see, if I keep going, I'm gonna be literally punishing everybody on YouTube. So we got people watching on Facebook, we got people watching on YouTube, we got people watching it on Twitter. And then they say it's good again. And then somebody say good different fronts boss. I know y'all want me to push through, man. I ain't feeling good about pushing through on this one, man. I think y'all gonna have to trust me to counsel this one and come back to it. Now, keep in mind, I'm not, I'll come back to it. I know exactly where I left off and I'll come back to it. Uh, so, let me do this real quick. Let me just kind of tell y'all what's coming up and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if it's working by then. I might continue to push through. Y'all give me one second. If, it, if, it, if it's not lagging, I keep going. Uh, and then I even try to get Coach Ma from here. But check this out. I just wanted to show y'all some, just get y'all prepared for what's coming. So I am still doing the series, right? So I'm doing this series from the book, from the Boss Cowboy video, uh, Boss Cowboy Guide. So every off season, I write a book on, you know, ways to build a team and different things we should be focusing on. And I do it by position. So it's based on uh, a lot of times, kind of what we're seeing right now the different acquisitions and stuff like that but i dig into how we can build very aggressively so i still got some groups to talk about i gotta talk about tight end i gotta talk about defensive tackle i still gotta talk about defensive end i gotta talk about linebacker but we've covered receiver we've covered running back we've covered tackle and we've covered guard we still gotta also talk about quarterback uh so be on the lookout for those series because I'm going to be really knocking those out. I, I expect to be all the way finished this week. And then I'm going to put all my energy on completing the book. And then once I complete the book, we'll break the book out, debate that as well. Because the book, even when we drop the book, The Boss Cowboy God, is never finished until we actually finish the 55-man roster. So they saying that it's good now. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of try to continue, man. Let me just try to continue. If it start lagging again, I'm going to cut it. So here we go. So let's go back to the fam since y'all say it's working. But it's not me. It's not. It's obviously not me because it's working on Facebook. It's YouTube. So they say YouTube is straight right now. So let's keep going. All right. So, But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking a real look at Gilmore versus our opponent. You know, that's, and so obviously y'all saw the film breakdown that I did on Minnesota. Now, I'm going to tell you like this. If you watch Gilmore versus Minnesota, he looked like the defensive player of the year. So here we go. So, but, so we watching him. He's at the top. Good coverage there. Uh, just, you know, just watching them so they obviously didn't go in this direction that time. Uh, so just kind of letting it play. And I ain't going to do look at the whole game. We just kind of just checking them out in coverage, right? So, and watching them. And then it's a way to kind of shortcut this that I'm not going to do it that way. Where you can, okay, so we got them at the top right corner. So up here you can see. So, you know, you could also see that the receivers when it's a running play or the ball not going away from them, you can see Brown gets lazy on his routes. So that's one thing you kind of notice about players. I'm trying to see, and you notice they also going away from Gilmore. So that's still showing a degree of respect. Now you can see him matched up one-on-one -on -one down here. Oh, good coverage right there. Good coverage. Wait to you get your hands on Brown. And Brown ain't getting no separation on that one. Remember, he ran that dig route. Not the dig route. He ran that drag route. And on that drag route, he got separation. This time, Gilmore was like, I ain't having it, dog. <laughs> so, but I'm, but see, to me, if you go watch film, one of the first things, okay, we got Gilmore at the bottom left corner. Okay, just watching him. Okay, they ran a play away from him, and I would say Gilmore was loafing on that play. All right, so I would give Gilmore a minus on that. Ooh, hold on real quick. I just saw this news. Will Hernandez signed a one-year deal for $1.8 million. 
Don't get me started on that. See, I also had Will Hernandez also on the Boss Cowboy God. So anyway, obviously I didn't want to hear that news. Yeah, because I, I knew God is also very deep, this free agent class. So and I'm just I'm just checking them out. So this is Gilmore at the bottom left. We just letting it play. Fantastic coverage. Fantastic. Oh, no separation whatsoever. I know it makes me sick too, bro. I know. 1.8 million for Will Hernandez. That makes me sick too. It makes me sick, Brian. I, I hate that. You know, he's uh, one of the sleeper guards we talked about in the free agent uh, video, guys. So we got him at the bottom left. Let me check him out on this coverage. <sighs> Good coverage. And have y'all noticed that they are staying away from Gilmore for the most part? You know, and so, and so as we watching and we just watching the film and we watching Hurts, they are making a very conscious effort and I'm just letting it play they are staying away from Gilmore so we watching them at the bottom left they tried to fool him he didn't go for it and I agree Brian he was a dog and I would have loved Will Hernandez because he's a Marshals and he's somebody that was a Dallas Cowboy fan so I like those Gilmore is also a Dallas Cowboy fan a lot of people don't know that uh, so Gilmore being a Dallas Cowboy fan, yeah, I mean, and Will Hernandez, I love it when we get boys who wanted to play for the Dallas Cowboys. So I'm going to watch one more series real quick with y'all. Just, just give me one second. Let me just pull up one more series. Because I actually, I, you know, I want to watch the whole series, but I mean the whole game, uh, which I've actually done, but it would make this show way too long if we went through the whole game. So let me keep going real quick. Uh, hold on real quick. Let me. So let me see. I think it's this drive. This drive. Hold on. Y'all give me one second. Because I. Let me go find a drive. So Jay Hurts. Okay. So that's that. Okay. Y'all give me one second. This is raw film. This ain't cute. So y'all give me one second. This is just raw. So, ain't no way to kind of get his presentation ready. You just kind of got to look at it and just trust it. All right, here we go. So, this third series right here. I just want to take a look at the third series. Hopefully, we ain't watched this series already. So, we already got him sitting up at the top left. Yep. And he lost on that slam route. D. Smith got good separation on him it looked like he had about two yards to separation on Gilmore right here uh, and they just got him you know they you know so so far so far if we just looking at this and we just looking at him versus our opponent and you know you know Phillips will do that QB sneak we already knew you always you always know what Philly go do on that third and short they go QB sneak that thing every time makes sense too makes sense that's the only thing that made Philly dangerous so now we got Gilmore at the bottom right so we see him playing right corner we see him playing left corner and it also looked like they was playing a lot of zone coverage but it looked like the people that they, the people that they they not going at him a lot they went at him with a drag route they went at him with two slant routes they converted two slants and they converted a drag route on him you know so the drag route they converted was bad coverage. The slant routes that they converted was he would just beat inside. So we got him at the bottom right. Yeah, they run in the screen and he was just doing some simple block. So as I'm looking at this tape, it's one thing I can say even just from right now. Ooh, Troy, Troy say Gilmore will be the number one corner on this team. Ooh, we, damn. Ooh, we. I don't think he gonna be the number one corner, bro. I think I'm. A, I think Diggs gonna step his game up just cause he here. I think we gonna see the most complete Diggs that we've ever seen. I'm gonna be honest. 
I think we go see the most complete digs. Cause see, when you get a dude like Gilmore in the room and you was the previous number one corner, but this dude was previously the number one corner and was a better number one corner, you go step your game up. You're not finna get little brother. Yeah, so anyway, just kind of just watching these this raw, uh, especially if we just judging it from the beginning, I would say for the most part, just in the beginning, that the, the Philadelphia Eagles receivers was winning the matchups when they win at Gilmore, you know, not, not majorly, not majorly, but a win is a win. And so far, if we just letting it roll, I'm not adding to it. I'm not taking away from it. If I'm just letting it roll, especially in the first half, it, it looks like the Philadelphia Eagles was winning on him. So I'm waiting on him to start making some plays here. And they hear they trying him. Okay, and there's the win. That's what you want to see. That's the win you want to see. That's what you want to see. Where they tried him on a double move. And they tried to do a, 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 a stop and go on him and blanket action. On their top receiver. You know? So that's a win. So, so far, it's about two wins for Gilmore. Week three wins for the Philly receivers. Right there, I don't like that, Gilmore. You kind of standing around watching. I don't like that. You know? Yeah, so this is, yeah, so this is somebody say, I'm showing y'all in the now. Yeah, this ain't no cut up. I'm letting this play. So, I ain't get, yeah. Yeah, who, yeah, who signed Hernandez? That's what I want to know while I'm looking at this. Who signed Hernandez? Just curious. Yeah. Because remember, this was also a competitive game. I don't know if y'all remember, but uh, the Colts almost beat the Eagles. Yeah, so, so, so he went to, hold on, hold on, what, oh, he went back to Arizona, okay, Arizona signed him back, man, we could have got Will on that, blanket, blanket, so listen, see, see, we seeing the comeback, we seeing the comeback, we seeing the comeback, now we got, he three for three, now he three, they got three wins, he got three wins, let's go, and he got, yeah, he begging for a flag. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> so we got him at the top. Oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I just want to cut. Yeah, so I'm just kind of giving y'all a, so, so I'm giving y'all a, a feeling of what it's likely going to be like once we play the Eagles, right? So if we stopped right here and just judged the first half, is right about what I want out of all my corners. I always want to see about 50-50. I always say that, right? I I think 50-50 is right around what you always want to see. You want to see your guys winning 50% of the time. You want their guys to win 50% of the time. If that's the ratio, your defensive backs are winning. Because, see, yeah, because, see, just on offense, the offense has the advantage. So for you to be able to be 50-50 on playmaking, especially versus Brown and D. Smith, we're in a much better position, you know? See, and the reason why I want to show this tape, because I'm being all the way honest with you, because if I just showed y'all which I did, I did a film breakdown on Minnesota, right? If you watch that Minnesota tape, I mean, I'm telling you, he looked like the defensive player of the year. If you go watch Gilmore on that Minnesota tape, he knocked out three receivers. Not knocked them out, but he made three big hits. You know what I mean? Uh, versus Minnesota. And he was just blanket the whole game. So the reason why I want to show this game, because I feel like this game is almost kind of like a notch down but it's more realistic to what we are likely going to see out of him consistently, right? I don't want to show y'all film breakdowns that's kind of, honestly, for lack of better words, blowing smoke. So I'm going to show one more series on this, and then we'll conclude the show. But I just want to just kind of just really take a real look 
at him versus the Eagles. So right there, I would say good coverage. I hate it when they throttle down. He throttled down again. I hate that. As long as the ball is in play, I always like to see good pursuit to the ball. But you do see, you, you, you see they not targeting him as much. And when they targeted him, for the most part, you're seeing that they have won, but he has won just as much. So right there, D. Smith being lazy, coming off the ball, typical receiver. When the ball ain't coming to them, they like to be, they like to loaf. You know, typical receivers. You know, I like receivers that like to get out the boys. That's just me. All right, so we got him at the top left, going against D. Smith. They tried him again. They was finna try him. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to do it, run a trick play. That's what it looked like. Let me look at it, because I didn't look at it from the quarterback. Oh, no, 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 they, they handed the ball off. Okay. All right, if somebody say, so it's obvious, A, B, and J, Lou gone. I will say that's right. All right, man, so anyway, man, I just want to kind of get into a little bit of raw film. Y'all let me know what y'all think about watching some raw film versus watching the cut of film so where we can... Because if we watch raw film, let me give you the advantage of watching raw film. It's not as, let me be honest, it's not as string presentation ready, but it's real. You see what I'm saying? So if you want a pre, better presentation, you want us to cut up the, the film. But if you want it just real, everybody should want to see the raw. Like, cause the raw tell you the real story. now. It's a little bit more boring, you know what I'm saying? It takes a little bit more time, but to me, you get a way better picture of what you're really dealing with. So y'all let me know. That's why I wanted to do this today. Y'all let me know if y'all want to continue to see Raw. You know, I need to. I really need to hear from y'all too. Do y'all want to really see Raw or do y'all want to get the cut-ups that y'all traditionally get from me and others, you know? Because I like the real. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes... I want to be able to just say, you know what? I don't even know this prospect. We could just turn on the film and let it talk to us. I'd rather do it like that because to me, that's when it's real. Because either other way, oh, all right. So here we go. Here we go. My boy Tariq raised a good point, so I'll bring this up before we get up out of here. He said, boss, did you talk about Dalton Schultz? I did not. So, and I'm hearing, I've been seeing a lot of y'all in the comments talking about, you know, West Coast taking it bad and all that kind of stuff on Don Schultz. This one thing I know about West Coast, West Coast, he definitely uh, believes in his ideals. He's very smart about, ah, my boy J. Mitch said, we don't like it raw, boss. I appreciate it. Keep it real with me, J. Mitch. My boy say, we don't like it raw. Yeah, I figured that. Some people wouldn't like the raw film, but, uh. But with Dalton Schultz, uh, so obviously re with our respect to my brother West Coast, I'm not panicking at all about Schultz. Uh, at all. I think Schultz was a better fit with Kellen Moore because of those option rounds. He was good at reading the defense. Dak was good at reading the defense. Also, the read for Dalton Schultz was much easier than outside receivers because the drops with the linebackers with cover two, cover three, and cover four is pretty much the same. So it's an easier read. So Schultz, in my opinion, was greatly inflated from Kellen Moore's system. It made him better than what he actually was. It's what the playmaker was talking about where he said, well, we're trying to make our stars role players and we're trying to make our role players stars. So Schultz is a role player, but he was treated like a star in Keller Moore's system. So if you're just looking at it from the data and you're looking at it from the statistics, you'll think that, we ha that we're gonna miss Dalton Schultz, but I don't think we're gonna miss Dalton Schultz at all. And plus, when you look at the history of tight end and you look at the history of Dallas Cowboy tight end, when you really pay attention to the history, 
we have successfully transitioned tight end to tight end over and over and over and over and over again. So even when we lost Witten, everybody was worried about losing Witten. We quickly and easily made the transition from Witten to Schwam. Do y'all remember that? And Schwam had about the same amount of production as Witten. Then we lost Schwam and we made the transition to Jarwin easily. Then we lost Jarwin and we made the transition to Schultz easily. Plus we got tight ends that are not just raw rookies, they have experience. And we have tight ends to where the best tight end in the game literally said he sees something in them. And on top of that, Schultz does not fit a West Coast style tight end. He does not. He does not fit the traditional tight ends that Mike McCarthy has consistently gone after. So I'm being honest. I trust. I trust Mike McCarthy on this. See, because when it was Kelly Moore, let's just put it like this. When it was Kelly Moore, Schultz got tagged. Now that Mike McCarthy's in charge, he didn't get an offer. Let me say that again. When it was Kelly Moore, Schultz got tagged. The role player was treated like a star. You tag stars. You tag people you can't see living life without them. So under Kelly Moore, that role player was necessary. But we don't have Kelly Moore anymore. We don't. So Mike McCarthy, now that he's over the offense, Notice the Dallas Cowboys and the reports have been they didn't even go make an offer to Schultz. And if Mike McCarthy is saying we don't make an offer, don't make an offer. Don't go get a tight end that fit your previous OC system. <laughs> So the reason why I didn't talk about shows because I don't miss him. I appreciate him, but I just don't think he fits. You know, that's just what it is. And, and somebody said West Coast crime because they let Schultz bum a walk. I, I wouldn't say my homie crying. See, West Coast believe in his ideas. So, you know, so it's one of those things. I still want to address my brother with respect. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we go agree, all of us, and sometimes we go disagree. But I greatly respect that West Coast go always stand on what he believes. See, that's what I do know about him. Sometimes we agree, sometimes we disagree, but it's go out. I'm always agree and disagree with my brothers and co other content creators with respect, because I do respect the work that everybody put in, you know? And then I do also agree that Schultz wasn't worth the money. He wasn't, not to me. Now, under Kellen Moore, yes. Under Kellen Moore, he was because he fit that system. He was necessary. He was very necessary to Kellen Moore's system. Uh, you know, because those options routes was a state. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm still, I still got the film playing in the background from Philly versus <laughs> from the Colts. So I just saw something. Anyway. So anyway, man. Like, so yeah, um, Tariq, if, if you wanted me to address that, we gonna be fine. We gonna be fine. And matter of fact, tomorrow, likely first thing, the first show I'm likely gonna talk about is likely gonna be tight end. Uh, Cause I already told you I'm getting into these series where I'm doing video breakdowns of each group. So obviously the next group I gotta talk about is tight end. I gotta talk about quarterback. Then I gotta talk about defensive tackles. I gotta talk about our defensive ends. Uh, then I got, and all of this is going to be related to what's available. 
we can also look at it from what's available. So anyway, um, you know, that's that's definitely uh, our show for the day. And I really appreciate y'all rocking with Boss Capital Sports. And y'all definitely stay with us tomorrow because it's going to be a lot more content that we're going to be really breaking out about ways to build this team because we're not done yet. And I truly believe this, that championships are won in the offseason. The offseason is where you make your biggest gains. Y'all continue to like, share, and subscribe to Boss Capital Sports. Um, I don't know what happened with YouTube with the lagging. I'm glad that it fixed. Uh, hopefully that never happens again because that actually never happened before. I got one of the best computers money can buy, so I've never had a lagging issue. Never. That was the first time it's ever lagged. My computer can handle a bunch of capacity. So I got the graphic card. I got the Pentium Speed. I got everything that makes sure that this so is going to kick off right. So I'm sorry about that lag. I'm glad it worked out. But y'all continue to like, share, and subscribe to Bounce Capital Sports. Uh, if anybody want to donate to the channel, some of y'all already have. Y'all snuck into the cash app, which was dollar sign, Boss Capital Sports, with your donations, and I greatly appreciate that. We appreciate all the super chats. But, man, this is a fantastic offseason. I'm having a ball. I'm certain y'all having a ball. But y'all stay tuned because we got a whole lot more that's coming that we not going to disappoint y'all on. We told you about likely it was going to be B. Cook. I was right on that. I'm likely going to be right that the next guy's likely going to be Fowler. So y'all are in the right place when it comes down to a country creator that's very serious about putting in the work to really read these tea leaves right to try to give y'all the right information. So I was right on B. Cook with the first time we freed up money. We just freed up money from B. Cook. I think that next guy's going to be Fowler. So let's just keep our eye on that. Uh, and then uh, y'all stay up, man. It's Boss Cowboy Sports where your voice matter. Peace. B -b 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 Boss Cowboy Sports where your voice matters. show to offer okay i apologize the last time i heard they didn't make it my offer so sorry about that either way we good B -b 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 boss cowboy sports thank y'all for the correction i appreciate that another one